In today's video, we're jumping back to take a look at our top prospect series, looking at the 2022 NHL draft picks for the New York Islanders, as well as the rest of their top prospects in their organizational system. We'll discuss the Islanders' future coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we're going to continue our top prospect and draft review series here today. So we're going to take a look at all the selections from the 2022 NHL draft here for the New York Islanders. And then we're also going to take a look at what other players they have that are interesting in their top prospect system. Who else is likely coming over the next couple of years that has a legit chance of being an NHL player. And of course could possibly have an impact on on this team some teams are deeper than others with their uh, you know certain positions or overall prospect depth the islanders are a team that to me that they're not overly deep but they do have a few interesting potentially impactful players here with uh, what they have coming uh, of course you we've seen a lot of picks trade it uh, more recently but you know at the same time like in 2022 like they didn't have a lot of picks there but they they get some interesting players out of that draft nonetheless uh, so of course you have to have really good scouting staffs especially when you're trying to be in win now mode and you're trading early round picks for uh, you know moves at the deadline you have to make the most of it it's just that simple uh, well, otherwise you're gonna you know, be in a situation where you, if you don't win, then you also don't have the prospect depth, and eventually you're going to head towards a rebuild instead of being one of those teams that can kind of withstand that test of time and almost have a couple more youthful impact players coming in to kind of level things out a little bit. The Islanders, as we know, are an older team. A majority of their uh, top players are, you know, either 30 or 30 plus. They have a few that are still. You know, kind of in that later 20 range, mid range, that are still obviously the, the you know, consider the youth on the team. But in this team, like I said, they don't have a deep prospect pool as you're going to see, but they do have some really interesting high impact players that could possibly be impactful down the road. And it's just that much important for a team like the Islanders to make sure that these players become what they think they could possibly be to see if they can continue being a real, you know, competitive team that can compete for the playoffs year in and year out so let's get started with the 2022 nhl draft picks and then we'll transition into their other top prospects from the past few drafts after that so as we can see here's the summary of the draft picks from the 2022 draft here for the islanders of course they had no first round pick and they did not have a seventh rounder but they have a second third fourth fifth and sixth round pick here so now let's take a little bit more in-depth look at each of these prospects their first selection was Callie Odelius, a left shot defenseman, 18 years of age, 5'11, 185, taking number 65 overall here at the Inchi Draft from Sweden. Uh, had a pretty good season over in Jagarden at Swedish Junior League, uh, putting up 30 points in 43 games. So, certainly looks like a defenseman with a pretty good ability to uh, jump into the offense, move the puck. Uh, Odelius, to me, could be uh, you know one of those smaller more mobile defenseman here in the near future. We also have Quinn Finley, another left winger, uh, American-born player, not quite 18 years of age here as of yet. Will be shortly by the time this video makes it to YouTube, he would have had his 18th birthday, but as I recorded, he's still 17th, third round, 78th overall, playing in the USHL, had a decent year last year, 29 points in 39 games, uh, playing for Madison. So, uh, you know, a potential left winger there with a little bit of upside, six feet, 168, definitely needs to add some muscle. You had Isaiah George, another left shot D from Oakville, Ontario. Played in the Ontario Hockey League for the London Knights for the Hunter Brothers. So certainly a great program there that has produced a lot of players. So that alone is promising. He's 6 feet tall, 195, uh, 18 years of age. Put up 23 points in 67 games for the Knights this past year. So obviously that shows good promise and potential. And uh, the uh, London team is always competitive, so there's always good in that regard. Next up, we have Matthew Maggio, who's a right winger from Ontario as well, 19 years old, 5'11", 186, taken 142nd overall in the fifth round, playing for the Windsor Spitfires in the OHL. Uh, so obviously being 19 years of age, he'll be 20 in November, so certainly somebody who's a little bit of a late bloomer. 85-point season last year in 66 games. You had Dalen Kuffler as well, a left winger from uh, Alberta, 20 years age, 6'1", six, uh, six one, 191. Sixth round pick, 174th overall, playing for the Kamloops Blazers. Had a pretty nice season last year, scoring 38 goals and putting up 59 points. But of course, given his age, I would hope and expect that his numbers would be a little bit uh, you know, better the way they are here. So the last two picks are certainly a little bit of a, a late-blooming player, so they're hoping to develop into something. On to the rest of the prospect pool now from other draft years. We have first up goaltenders, Jakob Skerek. 
Uh, obviously, 22-year-old goalie, 6'4", 205 pounds. has played a decent amount here so far in the American Hockey League for Bridgeport. Uh, I would suspect he's going to have another year there to be the starting goaltender and really see where things are at. If you look at last year, he appeared in 37 games with a 3.3 goals against and an 8, uh, 896 save percentage. That's not the greatest. So you certainly hope for a better season from him, and hopefully he can get to the point to be an NHL goalie in the next year or two. He's the closest one by far. We also have Henrik Tikkanen, a 21-year-old goalie from Finland. He's six foot seven, 198 pounds. Was a late, late pick, one of the last picks on the draft. In 2020, 214th overall, uh, hailing from Sweden. Actually, sorry, the Finnish, Finnish goaltender playing in Sweden is what I meant to say. Um, certainly hasn't uh, played a ton the past little while, but certainly has some good numbers over there. Not a player that I've really seen a whole lot from, but Henrik Tikkanen, uh, somebody who they could consider signing and getting the jump to North America. Of course, you get Tristan Lennox as well, the more recent goalie prospect, taken in 2021. Third rounder, 93rd overall. Certainly, I think... Uh, Probably has the highest potential of all these guys, but it's difficult to say. He's only 19, six foot three, 200 pounds. Uh, played for the Saginaw Spirit in the Ontario Hockey League. Had some decent numbers, but not great. But obviously, they've seen enough from him that uh, they certainly shows a lot of potential. So we'll have to see. There's no real surefire goalie here in the mix that's going to be a starter. But then again, they have you know Elias Sorokin, who should be able to hold down the fort for a number of years. But at the same time. It takes so long for goalies to develop. You want somebody showing that potential well before you need them. On to some defensemen. Let's start with Robin Salo. Of course, left shot D. The most likely player you're going to see on the roster this year. He's played 21 games so far, but by far not a, a regular. This is something that we, I think, expect. And uh, barring a trade, that the Islanders need from him this year. Certainly somebody who can jump into that top four role and play uh, you know, a good puck-moving style defenseman. Uh, you know, like I said, he's got decent size. He's got good pro experience now after playing in the American Hockey League. Played over in uh, Europe for a fair bit. So uh, Robin Sal, to me, like I said, of all their prospects, he's 23 now. and This is a pivotal year for him. Um, they need to get him into a more of a regular NHL opportunity to see what they have and see if he can be that missing piece back there. And of all these prospects, I think he's probably the only one that will play with regularity at least on the Islanders roster this year. We have Bodie Wild, who was a second rounder in 2018, still hasn't cracked a lineup. And of course, this past year, he didn't even play because of the vaccination requirements. Uh, he ended up going over to play in Sweden. Uh, obviously, that's something that Lou Lamarillo is pretty st uh, strong about, is that he will not allow his players to not be vaccinated. So I'm not sure how this is going to affect the relationship with the player moving forward. I don't know if Bodie Wild staying in Sweden or what his plans are. I haven't seen any updates from him, but at once upon a time, he was a, a pretty good-looking offensive defenseman from Saginaw who had a 70-point season in the OHL, but his future's in doubt for sure. We have Samuel Baudou, uh, 57th overall in 2019. Uh, Baudou's a left-shot defenseman here again, 21 years of age. Uh, played in the queue, of course, for Blainville, Broys Brand, Armada. Then, of course, got traded to Sherbrooke uh, to finish out his junior career. Had some pretty decent numbers. He's not like an overly offensively, you know, good puck mover, but he's certainly capable as well. To me, I don't think he's top pair potential, but he could be top four potential. Had some decent showing so far in the American Hockey League, but certainly needs to improve his play on his own end if he's going to have a chance to make the jump to the NHL. But there's still plenty of time in his case. Next, we have a yet another left shot D. This one from the 2020 draft, number 183 overall in the sixth round. Uh, Matthias Rajaniemi, who's a Finnish defenseman. Uh, been playing over in Liga, obviously somebody who's not overly offensive, more of a stay-at-home defenseman. Um, decent size, though, six foot three, 218 pounds. So if you can have a, a defenseman like that with the good size, can play strong defensive play, uh, you know, the odds of him coming over in a couple of years to be a player certainly looks like he has potential, at least. On to the forwards here, you got Atu Ratu, of course, uh, somebody who fell in their lap, in my opinion, a second rounder in 2021. 52nd overall for a player who at one point was in the conversation of being the top pick in the draft, or at least the top couple picks, uh, but fell for a variety of reasons. But he had a real nice year last year. He really broke through. But at 40 points in 41 games last year in Liga, finished the year with a couple strong games in Bridgeport. And I really think this kid is, has, has real potential. Uh, he's 6 feet tall, 180 pounds. Uh, he's going to be producing here, hopefully yet again for his country. He will be at this year's uh, World Juniors taking place in August. For Finland, a real chance for him to stand out, in my opinion, for his country. And I think long-term, he's one of the most important prospects 
in this prospect pool, and I think the Islanders really need him to fulfill that long-term potential. It could turn out to be a major draft steal down the road. Next up, we have William Dufour, the right winger from Quebec. Uh, just finished the season in St. John for the St. John Sea Dogs, winning the Memorial Cup. So he's going out on top. A little bit of a late bloomer, definitely fair to say. And now this is a player, because he played for St. John, is pretty close to where I live. I've seen the Sea Dogs play. I've seen him play enough times live. That can give you a pretty good scouting report here. Uh, he said he just turned 20 in January. Good size, 6'3", 204. I'd like to see him use his size a little bit more. He's going to need that to make it at the NHL level, I do believe. But at the same time, uh, he's not afraid of it. But just I need more consistency. But he scored a massive amount of goals this year, scoring 56 goals in 66 games, 116 points. Uh, won numerous awards in the queue this year, including uh, you know the Memorial Cup MVP. Uh, when it scored the most, when it mattered most. Now, his playoff record there only shows four points in five games, but the Memorial Cup, he tore it up. This guy is a power forward uh, who's a good skater. Uh, late in the season, he was starting to play more in all situations. Like, look at the difference from his stats in St. John compared to his other teams and other seasons in the queue. It was a massive jump, and I think a lot of it revolved around, uh, you know, bigger role, good coaching, and he just signed his ELC with the Islanders not long ago. To me, this guy is a real important prospect and could be a major contributor as a power forward for the Islanders here and in the near future. Next up, we have Simon Holstrom, the former first rounder in 2019. Six foot two, 200 pounds, 21 years old now. He's got good size. He's got a couple of years now in North America at Bridgeport. Last year was a real nice development year for him, putting up 43 points in 68 games. Produced a bit in the playoffs as well. Unfortunately, they didn't go very deep. But still, Simon Holstrom could be Another player who could factor into their offensive game here. Maybe more of a middle six playmaking winger for them down the road if he continues to evolve here. You also have Otto Koivula as well, another left winger. He's 23 now. He's got a one-way contract starting not the coming season but the year after. So I do wonder uh, how they're going to use him and continue to see him develop. But he's split time between uh, the Islanders and Bridgeport. The past few years, he's played 20 NHL games now. And uh, he needs more of a shot, in my opinion. He's got some real good numbers at the AHL level from multiple seasons, and he's just a guy in the waiting. He could be a guy as well to maybe crack the, the forward lineup and maybe get more of a chance this year as well. But where he is, waivers exempt, not a given. We also have Ruslan Ishikov, of course, was a late signing. He was drafted with the New York Islanders quite some time ago in 2018, and it was signed just before his rights were going to be expired. He did come over to North America and play at the University of, of Connecticut. Uh, for a few years, that's where he was when he was drafted. He's 22 now. Not overly big, but he's a really dynamic offensive player. Of course, Russian-born, 5'8", 168. Played this past year in the DEL for Mannheim in Germany. Had a nice season. I believe he's going to make the jump to North America this year. At least I'd like to see him do that. It could be a real interesting player here. Where they waited so late to sign him. Yes, he's small, but I really think he could be a dynamic player for him given the right opportunity. Next, we have Alex Jeffries, another winger, American-born, 20 years of age, 6 feet tall, 195 pounds, a fourth-rounder in the 2020 draft. Still playing U.S. college hockey from Merrimack, uh, but had a pretty decent year last year, 23 points in 33 games. I would suspect is going to be at least one more year in college, maybe two before he makes the jump, but certainly you know another potential late-rounder that has potential, still worth keeping an eye on. You also have Cameron Berg as well, another left-shot centerman. Uh, born in Minnesota, 20 years of age, 6 feet tall, 192 pounds, 2021 draft pick in the fourth round. Uh, currently playing at the University of Nebraska, Omaha in the NCHC. Had a pretty good year last year, 23 points in 37 games. Of course, before that he played in the USA, USHL and had some pretty good offensive output there as well. I think he's a ways away, but still another late rounder worth watching. So those are all the picks from the 2022 draft and all the other top prospects that we're discussing here today. Of course, as I mentioned, make sure you give me your thoughts on the Islanders prospect system and the overall depth down in the comment section so we can talk about it a little bit further, especially if you're an Islanders fan or if you've been following the Bridgeport team or some of these players maybe a little bit closer. I'd love to know what your personal thoughts are and what you think uh, the odds are that we're going to see some of these players not only compete in the NHL but have an impact at the NHL level here as well. Of course, with the Islanders being a team, like I said, that's still trying to be in that win-now mode. 
Some of these players might even become good trade currency to make upgrades to the team in other aspects. That's something that wouldn't be shocking at all. But as I said in the opener, as you can tell, that's not a super deep prospect pool. Um, but they do have some very interesting players that could have a big impact. And it's just that much important for the Islanders to try to get them there and hope that they work out. Because if they don't, with the older players, as they're starting to slow down a little bit, it could be trouble, and this team could be in more of a longer rebuild than they might think. But if this youth can kind of come in and obviously start to slowly offset these older players over the next few years, it will certainly make that transition a lot easier and help them remain competitive without having to take as big of a step back. So let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments. We'll talk about it further. Of course, stay tuned. There's plenty more teams coming in this prospect series as we get deeper into the NHL offseason. So make sure you subscribe and stick around if you're new to this channel. And of course, thank you very much for watching. I will catch you next time. Bye.